Hi, welcome to the new series. Congratulations again on completing the very easy series. We are now moving on to the easy category on the Edibit website. And I noticed that some of these challenges that are marked easy here, um, we've already completed as part of the very easy series. I don't know if they changed those on me. It's hard to believe that I messed up on all of these, but I won't go through those again. We'll just consider them part of the very easy series. And uh, yeah, that's kind of nice for us, right? We got some work done going into this. We did the work up front. So with that said, I'll go to the first one that's not completed in this series, which is called Shuffle the Name. slow today. Okay, you are to create a function that accepts a string of a person's first and last name and returns a string with the first and last name swapped. See the examples? They're very clear. Donald Trump goes to Trump Donald. Same for Rosie O'Donnell. And now they're just getting a little bit funny on us. Um, this is a common thing, right? You see people's names printed this way with a comma. A lot of times I don't know why they didn't have us add the comma, but okay, it's their challenge. Uh, the notes are there will be exactly one space between the first and last name in the parameter past. I won't believe them, but you're free to. And that looks like all we need to know for this one. So over to the code section, you know the drill, implement this yourself. In this easy category, we might pick up the pace a little bit. I'll probably explain things that are new in more detail, uh, things that we've done in the past. I may breeze over more, but you can always ask questions if you want more explanation. So for this, let's start with my decision not to just trust that they're going to give me good input. So I'm going to make a little helper method here for verification. I call it num spaces. It's going to take their string parameter. And I just want to be sure that there's only one space in the input parameter. So I'm going to return string count. Do you remember this? We've used this before. We're going to give it that lambda. I'm using ch to represent each character in the string. That's um, what's going to be processed here, each character at a time. And I'm going to use, I don't recall if we did this before, but the char class has this is white space method in the system namespace, and I'm going to use that. You could uh, just, you know, check if char equals to a single space, you know, that might be enough for you. I assume this is white space is going to cover things like tabs and multiple spaces, stuff like that. So it seemed like it would give us better coverage. And that's why I opted to use that here. So return the count of characters that represent white space. And now, since I did this, I can up front do a little check. If num spaces of the string parameter is not equal to one, that's what we're expecting. So we have a problem in this case. I'm going to oversimplify this by returning the string error. Um, that was a common thing we did in the first series to not go into excruciating detail about exceptions and arguments about how you should handle these kind of things. Um, so that's how I, I'm going to gloss over that. You feel free to add all the proper error handling that you like. Um, so otherwise, we got through. Uh, we should have exactly one space in the, or white space character in the string. Uh, if they told us the truth, it'll be a single space. So we'll assume that. Now with this, at this point, I can use that string split method that we've used in the past as well. So I'm going to say string split. And we 
have used this, but you can kind of get an idea here how it works. There's many overloads for it. Feel free to go through those. It's going to give me a, this string array. And um, this looks like they were doing some punctuation tabs in their example. I don't need all that. So we'll use something like that. Let's say string array. I'm going to call mine tokens. That's a common way to name uh, bits you get after a split. String split. And I'll just give it um, yeah, I'll simplify this and we'll just give it a space character. And then um, you could certainly check that the count, the size of this array is two at this point. I'm going to ignore that and say I put enough protection in here with this line. Uh, feel free to add more if you like. And I'm going to say return tokens one. Remember they wanted this in reverse order. Plus a space plus the first name. So notice I used index one first, the last name, and then I used the first um, entry, the first name. This token zero would be the first name, tokens one would be the last name. And then definitely need my using system link for the count method. And I believe I need using system for that char um, is white space thing. So let's give that a run. See if I did anything stupid. It happens a lot, so you've been warned. And that's OK. Nothing wrong with that. Here we go. Um, we got it at line 15, space 33, unexpected symbol, parenthesis. Where's 15? Uh, expecting, expecting identifier. Line 15, public, static, int, um, spaces. Oh, <laughs> wow, that was, yeah. <laughs> so here you go, we hit for stupid. Um, feel free to pause it if you like and figure out the dumb thing I did. We didn't give this a type, did we? That might help. Um, yeah, can't really expect the compiler to know what to do with just str. So uh, yeah. Details matter. And that's kind of the nice thing when you um, eventually use IDEs. You know, they would have a squiggly line under that STR thing. I would have had an even sooner indication that something was wrong. But anyway, it looks like otherwise we did it correctly. Um, couple things to note, you could have just put this string count idea right in here for num number of spaces and, and just made sure that it was not equal to one. A lot of times, even with one-liners, I like to wrap them in something that reads really nicely. Um, when you work with these lambda expressions a lot, this is, is very clear, but um, you know, a lot of times these lambda statements won't be as simple as this. They might have multi-line statements here instead of being really short. Oops. And so they're not um, immediately understandable. And when you kind of wrap it up with something like this, it just reads really nicely. If number of spaces in the string is not equal to one, it flows really nicely. It's friendly on other people who use your code who may have less experience with lambdas or whatever you do. And the nice thing is, is if you eventually decide to change the way you do it here, um, this method isn't affected. It's still num spaces. So you could have a situation where the link method was just not performant, 
and you wanted to do something that was more efficient and you just change it here in this one place and you're good. So I think that's all. As usual, share your solutions. Um, there'd be many ways to do this. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching.